Hi. So um, tonight I'm going to be talking about an open source uh, software called Terraform. So how every presentation in the history of the world starts. What the hell is Terraform? Terraform is basically infrastructure as code. The idea behind it is you write some fancy code, it goes and provisions you a bunch of servers on some cloud somewhere, and we'll also do a bunch of other backend stuff I'll get into later. So, anyone have any questions about infrastructure? Okay, awesome. So Terraform is pretty cool because it acts in three different situations. It has basically its write phase, its plan phase, and its create phase. So the write phase is basically where you actually code in what you're doing. Um, so as an example, here we have a Terraform file with four different resources. So the first resource is basically our Heroku app, which is basically a path service. Um, down here we have a digital ocean droplet, which is just a normal virtual private server. And then below that we have an AWS S3 bucket that we're using to, to kind of save some photos in. And below that we actually have a, a Route 53 zone, which is basically similar to a DNS entry for the domain miles.photo. Um, so a couple things to note is basically the, the file format. I'm not gonna really get into how this is coded because the documentation is actually really good and you can just read it there. Um, so basically we have a resource, we have the type, which is predefined different variables within that. So as you can see, everything is basically the platform underscore what to do at that platform. So we have a Heroku app, Digital Ocean Droplet, etc. And then this is basically its unique name in the system. So basically how we're gonna be able to reference it later. Now referencing it later comes in very important over here. So basically here, we're telling our DNS server to reference what we did over here and do it in an automatic fashion where we actually don't have to bother with remembering IP addresses, C names, or whatever else. This allows for some really awesome things. So if you've ever been in the, the the industry where you're kind of developing these applications, you're almost constantly changing one service for another for cheaper pricing, better stability, not hosted in America, what have you. So at any point, we could replace this Heroku app with, we can replace this DigitalOcean droplet with a Linode Linode, and then basically have our infrastructure moved over to that other service provider. So basically here we have a quick thing where we're basically saying that's the zone we want to add the DNS record to, that's the name we want to add it to, that's the type of DNS record we would like, there's the records where that basically Heroku is stored. So the great thing is, is that basically Heroku is giving us this variable. When we run plan, it basically does something similar to a comp compile and starts to match up all the different records. Um, underneath here we have a little bit more of a complicated one which is basically an alias. Uh, and this is matching to an S, uh, AWS S3 bucket. So that's pretty awesome. It does all that. The next thing that's kind of cool is basically the plan stage. So the plan stage, which also is the command terraform plan, basically allows you to run a mock setup of your infrastructure. This is really useful because it tells you what is going to break in your code before it actually deploys. So as an example, if we were to change you know, our Heroku app to a different name, and then all of a sudden our DNS entries all get screwed up, it'll actually warn us. Um, so yeah, basically that's its large idea. Basically think of it as a, as a glorified linter, but with a lot more information because it can actually go out, go to the APIs, make sure you're pulling in the right images and all that kind of information. And then of course our final stage is create which basically goes out, connects to the APIs, creates all the infrastructure you need, and you're done. So, I'm assuming uh, I've given a talk before on Ansible, so I would like to discuss how Ansible is integrated into Terraform as a provisioning service, which is actually a pretty cool thing. So, this is, an ex this is a more kind of larger example of a DigitalOcean droplet that I have here. As you can see, we have an image, we have a name, we have the region where it's hosted and the current size of the droplet. Um, down here, we have the provisioner. These are basically separate. They're not, there's not many, I don't believe, that are in the Terraform proper. Most of them are separate kind of plugin basis. 
And basically here we're telling provisioner Ansible um, what username to connect to, which playbook to run, which groups it should run, and then of course what host it should run on. And so basically what this means is when we, when we do Terraform create, I think it's Terraform provision, not Terraform create, we'll automatically also run all of our Ansible notebooks <laughs> so we can destroy infrastructure, rebuild infrastructure, have it all provisioned and fancy free. So, with five minutes and 30 seconds, questions? Pardon? He's saying he's at the end and was taking questions. Yeah. Question? At the end of the speaker's talk. <laughs> he's within his 10 minutes. <laughs> so, anyone have any questions? So Chris, could you please use the microphone? <laughs> Let me sit down at my Okay. So, the an is it the Ansible pieces that define, in effect, the recipe of how the individual services go together? Um, no. So yes. Um, how your actual box, like for instance, Terraform can install packages by itself during its own provisioning process. The only problem is, is it's, it's not like, it's not very easy to like customize. So as an example, if you had, if you wanted to install an Nginx package and then toss in a bunch of other stuff on top of that, it'll get really complicated quickly. So the idea is basically um, Terraform calls Ansible to then provision the server more to like your liking, where it's installing packages, configuring Postgres, getting Nginx up there, you know, that whole thing. Um, basically what this does is it just connects parts and basically says, we're gonna launch these instances of, on EZ2, these ones on Google Cloud. It basically supports almost everything. Is there, um, how, how does this like compare to like Kubernetes? Is, so is Kubernetes is, is more similar to OpenStack where it's like, well, that's a bad example, I'm sorry. Kubernetes is more of a like an environment for creating. Ter Terraform can actually connect to a Kubernetes cloud and create Kubernetes nodes? Is that sounds, what they're called? Sounds right. Yeah. So Terraform can create them. Pardon? Or do they call them containers? Maybe they're containers. Yeah, they're containers. Yeah. They, it can do that work, but generally it's similar to Docker where Kubernetes is similar to Docker where it's basically just this is how the container is going to look. It can do a similar thing, but I mean, the fact is maintaining Docker files for like large deploys is kind of complicated as it is. So Terraform basically allows you to be more direct with that. Terraform also can, can work into Docker as well. Okay. Two minutes? Awesome. Okay. Yeah.